In the vast expanse of the Mongolian and Manchurian plains, the Khitun people, led by the Yelu clan, emerged as a formidable force in the 5th century CE. Thriving on a combination of steppe pastoralism and agriculture, their mastery of horsemanship made them unparalleled on the battlefield. The rise of the Khitans to imperial prominence began under the leadership of Yelu Abaoji. In 907 CE, Abaoji, donning the title of Emperor Taizu, united eight to ten Khitun tribes and established the Liao dynasty. This marked a departure from the traditional method of choosing leaders through voting, as Taizu instituted a hereditary system to secure leadership continuity. The Khitans, under the reign of Emperor Taizong, displayed their ambition by assimilating the southern Bohai people of the Balhi state in 926 CE. Assisted by Chinese military leaders and administrators, the Khitans formed a new kingdom named Dongtun, with a Baoji son on the throne. In 938 CE, the Khitans, led by Emperor Taizong, turned their gaze southward, launching invasions into northern China. Exploiting the disorder that followed the fall of the Tang Dynasty in 907 CE, the Khitans ventured beyond the Great Wall, capturing an impressive 16 Chinese commanderies. Despite the arrival of the Song Dynasty, the Khitans, with their superior cavalry and military prowess, continued to invade Song China at will. The Song emperors, recognizing the Khitan might, signed the Treaty of Shanyuan in 1004 CE, agreeing to pay annual tributes of 100,000 taels of silver and 200,000 bolts of silk. The Khitans' expansionist ambitions extended beyond China. They conquered the Jerkin tribes of Manchuria between 983 and 985 CE. The Goryeo dynasty of Korea also felt the impact of Khitan power. In 942 CE, a Khitan embassy to Goryeo, including 50 camels as a gift, resulted in tensions when the Korean king mistreated the envoys. Escalating further, Emperor Shenzong initiated expeditions into Korean territory in 994 CE, compelling Goryeo to accept vassal status. Despite the victory at the Battle of Kwiju in 1018 CE, Goryeo, like Song China, found itself paying tribute to the Khitans and adopting their calendar from 1020 CE. The Khitans, with their strategic strength and military might, left an indelible mark on the historical canvas of East Asia. The vast Khitan Empire, a tapestry woven with cultural threads from the northern steppes to the heart of China, bore witness to a unique system of administration. Divided into five distinct regions, each with its capital, the empire displayed a blend of Khitan tradition and Chinese influence. Shangzhen, nestled in the modern city of Harbin, served as the capital of the sparsely populated northern realm, maintaining its cultural and administrative distinctiveness. To the east, Dongjing, near modern Shenyang, emerged as a vibrant capital, while the southern riches were overseen from Nanjing, modern Beijing. The Khitans, though military rivals with the Song dynasty, displayed a nuanced approach. In the southern reaches of the Liao Empire, where the wealth flowed, the Khitans embraced elements of Chinese culture. They mirrored the imperial administrative system and even adopted the civil service examinations from the Tang Dynasty. Surprisingly, despite their conflicts, trade relations between the Khitans and the Song Dynasty remained unscathed. Much of the silver tribute paid by the Song for peace on its northern borders found its way back to China in exchange for valued imports. The Khitan governance system mirrored this duality, effectively managing the semi-nomadic and pastoral north with traditional Khitan methods while adopting a more Chinese approach in the populous south. The selection of emperors exemplified this balance, with hereditary rulers from the Yelu clan and consorts exclusively from the Xiao clan, ensuring a harmonious representation of both clans in the imperial household. While the emperors reveled in opulence, they maintained a connection to their nomadic roots. Emperors periodically shifted between palaces and various capitals, indulged in hunting trips and, at times, slept in tents to remind their people of their nomadic heritage. Economically, the Liao state deviated from the traditional Chinese disdain for merchants and trade. Unlike the Confucian principles that viewed trade as beneath a gentleman, the Khitans actively supported merchants and commerce. They engaged in trade across Asia, exchanging goods such as sheep, horses, furs and carpets for silver, tea, silk and other precious items. This progressive economic approach set the Khitans apart from the traditional Chinese mindset. Religiously, Buddhism held sway as the principal religion, coexisting with traditional Khitan beliefs like shamanism and divination. The rulers actively supported the construction of Buddhist temples and monasteries, spreading the religion through printed books, 
while Buddhism influenced Khitan art, featuring collaborations with Chinese artists, a distinct Khitan aesthetic persisted. Highly ornamented saddles, gold stirrups, and tent-shaped funerary urns showcased their love for beautifying objects significant to Khitan tradition. The blending of Chinese and Khitan rituals, exemplified by unique offerings honoring ancestors, illustrated the rich cultural tapestry that defined the Khitan Empire. As the 12th century unfolded, the once mighty Liao dynasty faced an ominous challenge. The Jurchen, a tribe from the northeastern reaches of China, launched relentless attacks, marking the emergence of a formidable foe. These Tungusic speaking people, forebears of the Manchurians, took a bold step by establishing their own Jurchen Jin state in 1115 CE, with Aguda assuming the title of emperor. In this era, three emperors vied for supremacy in the region, setting the stage for a seismic shift. The Jurchen Jin, eyeing territorial expansion, found an unexpected ally in the Song Dynasty, united by a common goal, the defeat of the weakened Liao. In 1120-21 CE, Aguda, now Emperor Taizu, directed his forces towards Jahal, Urea, the heart of the Liao Dynasty. The Liao, already grappling with internal discord between the Sinicized elite and traditional clans, faced an existential threat. In a momentous showdown, the combined might of the Jurchen Jin and the Song Dynasty converged on Jahal. The Liao, battered by external assaults and internal strife, succumbed to the relentless tide of change. In 1125 CE, the once dominant Liao Dynasty crumbled, bringing an end to an era of Khitan prominence. Amid the ruins, a flicker of resilience emerged. Ye Lu Dashi, a relative of the Khitan royal family, rallied the remnants of the Khitan army, steering westward into Central Asia, a new chapter unfolded, the rise of the Kera Kitai, also known as Zaliao. However, this revival proved ephemeral, as the Mongols, ascending to power in the early 13th century CE, would ultimately sweep away the remnants of the Kera Kitai, leaving an indelible mark on the ever-changing tapestry of history. As the 12th century unfolded, the once mighty Liao dynasty faced an ominous challenge. The Jurchen, a tribe from the northeastern reaches of China, launched relentless attacks, marking the emergence of a formidable foe. These Tungusic speaking people, forebears of the Manchurians, took a bold step by establishing their own Jurchen Jin state in 1115 CE, with Aguda assuming the title of emperor. In this era, three emperors vied for supremacy in the region, setting the stage for a seismic shift. The Jurchen Jin, eyeing territorial expansion, found an unexpected ally in the Song Dynasty, united by a common goal, the defeat of the weakened Liao. In 1120-21 CE, Aguda, now Emperor Taizu, directed his forces towards Jahal, Urea, the heart of the Liao Dynasty. The Liao, already grappling with internal discord between the Sinicized elite and traditional clans, faced an existential threat. In a momentous showdown, the combined might of the Jurchen Jin and the Song Dynasty converged on Jahal. The Liao, battered by external assaults and internal strife, succumbed to the relentless tide of change. In 1125 CE, the once dominant Liao Dynasty crumbled, bringing an end to an era of Khitan prominence. Amid the ruins, a flicker of resilience emerged. Ye Lu Dashi, a relative of the Khitan royal family, rallied the remnants of the Khitan army, Steering westward into Central Asia, a new chapter unfolded, the rise of the Kera Kitai, also known as Zaliao. However, this revival proved ephemeral, as the Mongols, ascending to power in the early 13th century CE, would ultimately sweep away the remnants of the Kera Kitai, leaving an indelible mark on the ever-changing tapestry of history.